So my Save Something You Love project is going to be on the John Muir Trail. Uh, it was obviously began in uh, 1915. It is a 210-ish, depending on which route you take, mile trek that people will usually do in about three weeks' time. Uh, thousands of people have done this. This was one of my dreams to do. Uh, but due to a recent ankle injury that will probably never heal, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do it. One of the goals with this was this would be um, when my boys especially, and maybe Carly, if she's into it, uh, when they turned about 13, we would take... We would take three weeks, probably longer, uh, and just over the summer, one of the perks of this job, and go off into the backcountry and see some of the most <laughs> yeah, see some of the most incredible landscape in the world, uh, and hopefully. Hopefully with that, I could uh, pass down my love of this, of this nature and everything else to my kids. And I hope there's still a way to do that. I really do. Because I think that uh, just loving this land and the views, the stuff that we're going to see today just in pictures uh, is only just, you know, just a little tiny glimpse of what's actually there. To actually be there, to actually see it, would be something pretty amazing. Uh, in many ways, the only reason that this exists, not just for its namesake, uh, but for the work that he did, was this man, John Muir. Uh, he was a passionate conservationist. Uh, he wanted desperately that these things would be there for you and me. And I can only imagine in some of his writings that he felt the same amount of emotion as me passing it on to my boys and my daughter when he thought about keeping it and having it passed on to you guys. Um, John Muir was a very likable guy in a lot of ways. He was from Scotland. Not a lot of people knew that. He had, I know that now, he has a very had a very thick accent, and was a very dynamic personality. He was also really quotable. Um, some of his writings are just phenomenal, and some of the things that uh, he would pen are still just amazing word pictures of what it's like to be out there. Uh, I love this one. He believed that Beauty was part of what everyone was gifted as a right at birth. That we should have access to beautiful places. And he fought like crazy to save beautiful wildlands. Uh, he even went so far as to say there's no such thing as ugly wilderness. Um, he, he was one of the main driving forces in us realizing that if we wanted to protect Yosemite, we couldn't just draw a line around Yosemite Valley. That everything was connected. And if we didn't connect, if we didn't protect the land around it, and the habitats, and the animals, and the trees, and everything else, that we're doing nothing. And that's, he is one of the big reasons that there was a push to make Yosemite as large as it is. Yosemite Valley is only like 5 or 7% of the entire park's acreage. And he was one of the key players that made that a reality. The trail, 210 miles, uh, if you didn't catch it. An overall latitude gain of 10,000 feet. But you can see there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of peaks. There's a lot of passes. Uh, and what we're going to do today is just kind of take a look at some of the highlights. Uh, really, probably some of the ones that I'm more familiar with. I've been to some of these places. Uh, and we start with the first section, and we will start with somewhere where I would love to go, and I've always found 
uh, probably more intriguing than actual Yosemite Valley, is Little Yosemite Valley. So if you're up at Glacier Point, if you look off to the right, you have Little Yosemite Valley over here. Um, some of the waterfalls, some of the wildlands, the same, the same clues to the past of this area are all there. In many ways, uh, they're more obvious because they're less common. We're not so used to it, so we see it. Uh, when I'm out in the wilderness, especially in Yosemite, uh, I love the puzzle. Why is this here? Okay, why does it look the way that it does? And looking for the evidence, wondering why are there trees here and not there? Why is this shape this way? Why are these rocks this shape? Why are they here in general? And I think that um, the Sierra Nevadas offer that. They give you that puzzle to just play with um, in a way that's simple enough that you can get it, but is complex enough that you're never done. Uh, from here, you go over Cathedral Pass, which is up at almost 10,000 feet, uh, and then you drop into Tuolumne Meadows, a glaciated meadow. Uh, the trees are slowly making their way back across from where the glacier basically scraped everything clean, and the tree line is just slowly encroaching its way back past. Um, Tuolumne River, uh, excellent fishing. I have fond memories of fishing with my dad on this river, uh, but seeing the horns and things like that that are just um, this beautiful evidence of what the past was here. From there, uh, we moved quite a way over two different passes to Thousand Island Lake, uh, well named because it is dotted, maybe more now. It's so shallow that there's just these islands everywhere. Some of them are literally this big. Uh, some are larger, and they're just everywhere. Uh, to see the colors that are brought not only by the plants, uh, but by sunrise and sunset. Um, even early risers, I'm an early riser, I love it. Early in the morning is the quietest time. Maybe it's just my house. Um, but it's always quiet, and especially when you're in the backcountry, waking up right at dawn's first glow and getting to see the alpine glow on the mountains where um, it's sunny up here before it's sunny down here is an absolutely amazing thing. Uh, moving from there, one of just the most curious places in the world, Devil's Post Pile. Getting over in the Mammoth Lakes area. Um, we believe now that this was actually the remnants of a basaltic lava flow that cooled in such a way where these columns of basalt actually formed in hexagonal shapes. And then the top was ground off by a glacier later. Uh, you can stand up here. It's only about a mile loop to go from down here around and up there. Uh, and you can see the glacial polish where the where the glacier picked up sand and literally sanded the rock smooth as it went over. And you can see, in some cases, these almost perfect hexagonal rocks. And you know that those go down below you a good 30, 35 feet, uh, and then you've got this pile at the bottom. Uh, it's the mystery of nature. How in the world could a natural process do this? And again, it's one more piece of the puzzle that it just, it, it, keeps that wonder, and I think that so often when we get um, so focused in science, we lose the wonder, and that's something that we can't really ever lose. It's, it's the most important thing. Uh, from here we head over to the next section, Silver Pass, one of the higher places, uh, where the countryside just literally opens up before you. It's wide open, you can see on a clear day for miles. Uh, it also Another thing I love, it gives a hint as to where this all came from. What you're looking at is a batholith. It's all granite. Giving us the hints that this has been uplifted, that tectonics have moved this, have thrust this up in the air, um, as though to kind of put it on display for us to see what process has been going on to put it here. Um, and it's amazing to me how even the most rugged, uh, moon-like, alien surfaces when you get up here, are just absolutely gorgeous. The beauty, you can't get away from it. It's there everywhere you look. Uh, from here, we go to Selden Pass, uh, which is the halfway mark, right about the halfway mark. Uh, I kind of like the symbolism 
of a little bit more life, even though if you're actually hiking at the 100 mile mark at this point, you may not feel that way, but it just sort of opens up into the country that's ahead. Uh, from there, moving on, kind of the other side of the halfway mark, uh, because the halfway mark would actually be this trough, is going to be Evolution Lake. Um, I've never been here, but I've had several friends that have uh, come through here and say that the Alpen Glow uh, reminds me a lot of Iron Lakes, just the beautiful um, rust-colored mountains, um, the water, and kind of the the difference, the juxtaposition of those two, to see something so placid and glassy versus something so jagged and harsh. Um, it's amazing. Uh, from here, we're just going to kind of fast forward through this section because I've never been to any of these places. Uh, and go to the end, Mount Whitney. You have the option to summit Whitney. Uh, it's not actually part of the trail. A lot of people at least plan to, but after 200 miles, maybe doesn't sound so hot, um, but Whitney, uh, one, of the, one of the highest places in the Sierra Nevadas, absolutely gorgeous, uh, a brutal climb from what I've heard, um, but when you see shots like this, I think one of the reasons that I love Ansel Adams is the simplicity of it. There's something a little bit more majestic about the black and white because, ironically, you can almost sense the light more because of it. I'm going to keep it to you. Um, it is threatened. There are threats. Um, fire is a huge issue. It can morning, completely Badger. destroy everything we're looking at. All girls varsity basketball players are to be released at noon today. Uh, I like I like this, but I don't think it's true. I think when we go into nature, um, we take a lot more from it. Also today at lunchtime, there's an SBLA meeting, and and hopefully, uh, I don't know about you, but when I go into the wilderness, a lot of times, um, I'm planning on leaving something there, some hurt, some difficulty, some unrest, and I think that John Muir. Uh, did the same thing pretty frequently. Um, it's not about the trail. There's a bigger picture. You know, I think that a lot of times, at least for me, this is about how I feel. Like, it's just kind of jagged and gnarly, and it doesn't feel pretty. but in a lot of ways it really is. And I think that uh, one of the things that we can see in this is that um, even in this, there's detail that's gorgeous. And as much as I love home, I love my kids. I love my wife. They're the best. Everybody else has second best. But in so many ways, this is true. Going to the mountains is like a home. And especially for me, uh, there really is that cathedral. to save it so that a hundred years from now there can be people that enjoy it still. Thank you.